Welcome to a sparkling new edition of Beeb Watch. I'm Kevin O'Sullivan, and if you're just tuning in now, this is the show where we give the state broadcaster the talk TV treatment. When I put it under the microscope, and remember, I'm watching the BBC, so you don't have to. If you're a parent or a former child, you'll know all about CBeebies. This is the channel specifically for the under sevens. And the people who run it have decided in their wisdom to tell the kids all about the clownfish. The clownfish is one of 500 species of fish that can actually change its gender. It can go from a boy to a girl in certain circumstances. There are 32,000 species of fish in the world, but CBeebies only wants to know about the gender fluid fish, the 500, specifically the clownfish. Did you know, children, that the clownfish can change from a boy to a girl? Why are they telling kids about this? You know why they're telling them because they want everybody to change from a boy to a girl. They want to preach this woke nonsense to kids that you can change your gender. Why are they doing it to under sevens, under sevens? This is woke brainwashing by the state broadcaster. I would suggest uh, not a great way to treat children. And if they're going to tell them all about how the clownfish can change gender, and if you like, the 499 other species of fish that can do that, then they've really got to bring in, don't you think, the 31,500 that cannot change from a boy to a girl. Why don't they mention that? I think we know. This is deeply, deeply wrong. The state broadcaster should make programs, by all means for children, but that doesn't mean they have the right to brainwash children. Still with the BBC and kids, it has a special children's website for education. It's called Bite Size. Kids go in there, it helps them revise, helps them prepare for their exams. Recently, the Bite Size website elected to tell kids that everyone in Britain, everyone who lives here, everyone, is descended from immigrants. Once again, we know why they're saying that, because it's fashionable and groovy and in favor of migrants and immigration. That's what people at the BBC, they like all that sort of stuff. It's very North London. They're grown ups, but they're gonna tell the kids about this as well. My point about this is that once again, why? Why are you delivering this information to little kids? Uh, everybody in Britain is descended from immigrants. Why? Why are you doing this? I, I know why, because it fits in with your fashionable ethos, your fashionable North London views, your groovy outlook, and you think kids should be brainwashed into thinking the same as you. But what worries me also about this statement is it's dubious, it's dubious. I accept that because of the vicissitudes of history, you know, because of the long history of the world and the human race, essentially most countries will be full of people who are descended in the end, no matter how far back, from immigrants. But there will also be some who are not, who have always lived here. Their ancestors date all the way back to the dawn of humanity and they've lived here. So I would contend that the contention that all British people living in Britain, they're not necessarily British of course, but all people living in Britain are descended from immigrants. I don't think it's factually right. But in any case, why? It's weird, it's weird. They're just trying to lure kids into their left-wing liberal North London way of thinking that is absolutely ruining the BBC and turning it into a propaganda outfit rather than a proper state broadcaster. To paraphrase Pink Floyd, hey, teacher, leave them kids alone. Never mind the teacher. Hey, BBC, leave them kids alone. If that's riled you up, and as you can tell, it certainly riled me up, get a load of this. According to recent figures published by the Home Office, the state broadcaster is still prosecuting nearly 2,000 people every week for not paying their license fee. Thousands and thousands and thousands of people every week, every month, every year brought before the courts for not paying their £159.50 license fee. This is wrong. The other disturbing thing about people who get fined by the state broadcaster or by the courts for not paying the state broadcaster's license, the disturbing thing is that a disproportionate amount of them are women. 
there's something wrong here. Now the way to end this madness, this deranged insanity, is to stop the license fee. Nowhere else on the face of the earth does this happen. We go around saying, oh, Britain's such a sane country. This isn't sane, this is mad. The BBC has to stand on its own two feet and stop charging us this ridiculous, anachronistic, outdated, ludicrous license fee. I always admire the people who jump ship and get away from the state broadcaster, so big up to one of the good guys, Dan Walker. Dan Walker, of course, left the BBC to join Channel 5, where I think he's doing pretty well. He's doing the Evening News Bulletin, various other programmes. The word was that, uh, as well as doing Football Focus and his various other programmes, Dan Walker wanted a big primetime show in the evenings and the state broadcaster wasn't keen on giving it to him. Well, more for them, because he's a good hand. Apparently, they propelled him towards the door, so he quit, went to Channel 5, and he's now saying he's glad he left. He doesn't miss the BBC, and he says the BBC has got to change. Uh, you know, to be fair, he's a BBC man. He says he still watches it. He still approves of what it stands for. But... He says it's got to change, it's got to be more up to date, it's got to move with the times. <laughs> BBC, good luck with that, Dan. I guess there are still perks about working at the BBC as one state broadcaster cameraman found out at the FA Cup final. Manchester City had just beaten Manchester United. Jack Grealish, the City star, was being interviewed. Uh, and I don't know if you're allowed to use these kind of phrases anymore, but uh, I used to be a Sun reporter, so I'm going to do it. A buxom blonde in the crowd spotted the cameraman who was clearly a very good-looking guy and started going like this call me call me uh, the problem being that got onto the telly so millions of people saw this woman saying the camera give me a ring I wonder if he did and I wonder what happened after that and the award for the stupidest question of the week goes to the BBC's Grand Inquisitor the former political editor Laura Kunzberg who was interviewing the actor Tom Hollander Tom is currently starring in in a stage play called Patriots at the Noel Coward Theatre in London's West End. This is a play about Litvinenko, uh, the Russian who was poisoned by Putin. It's a story of Putin's nefarious activities. Let's have a look at the clip. It, what has changed is that now that we're at war, I, I'm um, more cautious about opening any post that arrives at the theatre from Russia. Really? What do you worry might happen? That's interesting. Well, uh, we're, we're, we're at war, aren't we? Not exactly Frost Nixon, is it? Well, that's it for another fabulous episode of Beeb Watch. And don't forget, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, whether you agree with me or not, uh, write down your thoughts in the comments box below. And by the way, why don't you subscribe if you really enjoyed this episode? There'll be plenty more. And don't forget, I won't be fining you if you don't pay, because this is free, unlike the BBC. Anyway, enough of the BBC already. I'm switching channels.